While Paula Derringer is not a household name for every family, it is for mine. I have grown up hearing the stories about Paul and how he changed the world of baseball. From my dad telling me stories about all of his baseball achievements to my family collecting every piece of Paul Derringer memorabilia they can find, I have always been familiar with his story. Despite me having prior knowledge about the amazing, colorful, and inspiring life of Mr. Paul Derringer, while completing the research for this speech, I was enlightened to find so many more stories about him. This presentation will give you the knowledge of Paul and his life story, including his time before baseball, his time during professional baseball along with his accolades, and lastly, his life during retirement and his family lineage. I hope that you all find his story as fascinating as I do. Samuel Paul Derringer, aka Duke, was born on a brisk Wednesday on October 17, 1906 in a small town in Kentucky. Some sources report that he was born in Springfield, Kentucky, but others list his birthplace as unknown. According to his biography on CelebAges.com, he was a part of the GI generation, also known as the Greatest Generation, and he experienced most of his childhood during the Great Depression. Not much is known about his family other than the name of his father, Samuel Paul Derringer Sr., but because of this, we can assume he was not from a wealthy family and likely had a difficult upbringing. Many of my sources describe Paul as a rambunctious young man who didn't like to not do nothing. These character traits, coupled with his poor upbringing, meant that he got into a lot of trouble as a young child. I imagine he often got bored and lonely when he wasn't in school. I also imagine he had a job from a young age to try to help his family make ends meet. I cannot imagine the stress he must have felt trying to provide for his parents and his younger brother Howard. His family was likely in the farming or construction business, both requiring hard work and many laboring hours. I know times were different then, but I cannot imagine a young child having to complete such difficult tasks in order to survive. Nothing is known about Paul's life in middle school, but I imagine his days were still spent working with his family to try to get food on the table and a roof over their heads. He was probably under so much stress that he did not have time to think about anything else and was likely punished if he did. In high school, it is reported that he started playing sports like football, basketball, and of course baseball. I imagine these four years of his life are what influenced him to make baseball his career. It is crazy to think if he didn't make the team, had one bad game, or didn't even try out for the sport of baseball, I would not be here giving you this speech telling you about his great achievement. If only he knew what that one decision would lead to. Paul Derringer's life playing professional baseball was, to say the least, a very interesting one. According to a baseball card one of my family members owned, Paul's first professional experience in Danville in the 3-1 League in 1927, he went to the St. Louis Cardinals in 1931. Fast forward to two years and Paul is now a catcher for the Cincinnati Reds. My family always told me that Paul started out as a catcher, but during one game, he asked to pitch because he felt that the game was taking too long and he had a fishing trip he had to get to. I do not know if that story is true, but it certainly lines up with some of the other crazy stories that I read about him while doing the research for the speech. It is crazy to think that that one moment, that one question, that one fishing trip changed the history of baseball and certainly his career in it. According to findagrave.com, his 161 victories with the Cincinnati Reds are a club record for a right-handed pitcher. He also held the team record for career strikes out, strikeouts when his career ended. Those stats are certainly impressive, and I'm sure he felt very proud of himself for achieving such great things. But along with these impressive numbers, Derringer also pitched the first ever night game in Major League Baseball history during Franklin D. Roosevelt's presidency. However, despite these great achievements, there are several stories that paint Derringer out as an impatient man who liked to use his fists to solve his problems. One of the stories I read was talking about Derringer beating a guy up outside of his hotel room, getting sent to jail for assault, and then the Reds had to bail him out so he could pitch a game. I'm sure his colorful character definitely put a damper on his time in the Major League Baseball. That kind of thing, his violence, would definitely not fly during today. So I'm thinking that Derringer should consider himself lucky that he was a pitcher during then, not now, when baseball rules are now strongly, stronger enforced. 
despite this, Paul Derringer was and still is a baseball legend. And in 1958, Derringer was named a founding inductee into the Cincinnati Reds Hall of Fame. He certainly had an interesting way to go about solving his problems, but no one can deny the talent, the dedication, and the courage that Derringer had during his time playing baseball, especially for the Cincinnati Reds. When Paul Derringer decided the life of baseball was no longer for him, he retired from the sport in the MLB in 1945, and according to the Society for American Baseball Research, he went on to work and, as I quote, as a plastic salesman and also worked for the American Automobile Association as a troubleshooter taking care of matters such as bail. During his life of baseball, Paul was married two different times, but during his retirement decided to try his hand at, in his third and final marriage. So towards the end of his life, Paul married his third wife and then retreated to Florida with her and his only daughter. Lita Eloise produced from his second marriage. Sadly, on November 17, 1987, Samuel Paul Derringer Jr. died at the age of 81 in Sarasota, Florida, leaving behind his final wife, his only daughter, and an amazing baseball legacy. Paul had lots of distant relatives, such as cousins, whose identities could not be found when he sadly passed away. And while I do not know how, because it is very distant and nobody in my family knows, I am a relative of Paul Derringer. You probably could have guessed that from the last name. In the state of Kentucky, Paul has his face in the KFC Yum Center. He has a street named after him in my hometown in his likely birthplace, Springfield, Kentucky, and it is rumored that his parents are also buried here in Springfield, even though he was cremated in Sarasota, Florida. While his story may not be important to others, it certainly is to me and my family. Paul may have had anger issues and a controversial way of dealing with his problems, but knowing that one of my family members, although distant, had a rough upbringing and was able to turn his life into something amazing absolutely warms my heart. I find his story inspiring and I encourage all of you to do more research on the amazing life of Paul Derringer because there are many fascinating stories that I was not able to share with you all today. Thank you all for listening, and I hope you like hearing about the amazing, colorful, and inspiring life of Samuel Paul Derringer, Jr. Thank you.